Hughes wrote a great script. It's not like he's precious about each word. He's precious about his own sense of truth. You want the truth? Yeah, I want the truth. I think he said that he um, had written Breakfast Club a really a long, long, long time before. And he had it in the drawer or something. You know, in the industry, it's called a Talking Heads movie, where people, you know, there formerly had been films like My Dinner with Andre or, you know, maybe European films where it's so simplified. But with that, it was really like filming a play. John said something like that he wrote the first draft in a weekend. And both Amelia and I, it was almost simultaneously, I was like, first draft, okay, how many drafts do you have? And Hugh said, well, I got a, a few, why? And Amelia and I were like, can we, can we um, read them? This is during the rehearsal process. So he's like, sure, hey. So we read them. I was like, John, so how about if we put this? He was like, sure, let's try it. John was awesome about uh, making sure we had rehearsal time, which is like a foregone conclusion these days. You don't have that. You just show up on the set, you know, where's my trailer, where's my makeup? But with that, we rehearsed it. We really sat, just the six of us in a room, while the sets were still being finished and made. And, you know, we all had a lot of time to talk about it and share our insights about what we were going to do and how it could play out. But the rehearsal was key. Yeah, I really thought uh, that that's how they made movies. It certainly is the best way to go about making a good movie, I think, is when everyone's on the same page and confident and ready. He just wanted everybody to come in, you know, with their character and start playing around. That's how he shot it. I mean, he was so open to anything that anybody brought in or anything that happened in the scene, you know, any riff that you do off his writing. He wasn't precious about anything. Claire, you want to see a picture of a guy with elephantitis of the nuts? Elephantitis of the nuts or whatever. Judd came up. I, I don't know where that came from. John let us have five, six takes. I mean, his shooting ratio is pretty high, I think and then he would let us go off, and occasionally what went off would be used. There was a lot more improvisation. We had a, a script supervisor, Bob Forrest, I think his name was. How you doing, Bob, if you're out there? Um, I think Bob came out, he was cajoled out of retirement to do The Breakfast Club. And shortly after the completion of Breakfast Club, he, he for sure retired. Mole really pumps my nads. Well, yeah. He stopped taking notes and brought in a little tape recorder that he would like turn on because like, we just because Hughes would put that 1500 foot mag on the camera and like that stuff like Anthony Michael Hall is just genius of him when he's uh, getting stoned and you know chicks they can't hold a smoke and he's like it's going on and we did a few takes of it and he's literally going on and on you can hear eventually the click 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 of the film in the mag because it's run out and it's just going around we're all aware of it it's not like Hughes doesn't know what that sound is but we're Gonna watch Michael for a while, why not? He's great. <laughs> Chicks, can I hold a smoke? That's what it is. It's hard to try and, and uh, recreate teen speak when you're not a teenager. It is, and it's, it's, it's hard to make it sound authentic. And I don't think there's a false note in, in terms of the vernacular in any of John Hughes' films. Can you hear this? You want me to turn it up? I think a lot of it he made up. Like in Breakfast Club, like a, what does he call the guy? Like a Magna Zoom dweeby or something? I don't think that was pre, like a pre-existing insult. Um, but it's so awesome and, and people remember it. Face it, you're a Neo Maxi Zoom dweeby. Neo Maxi Zoom dweeby. 